guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here. And today I am privileged to be at Rosalind Packer Theatre with Tom Oliver from Velvet. Hello. Hi, Tom, how are you going? Very good. Sorry, I should talk into this. Yeah, now you have a microphone. <laughs> oh, I just came off stage using a mic and I put it down. I'm good. How no, are you? Now you've got another one, but Rave It Up. I dig it. It's really, yeah. really cool. Well, thank you. He was saying some really nice stuff off, off camera there. Yeah, we don't say it on camera. No, because <laughs> he doesn't really mean it. No. <laughs> no, we're having a great time here. No, it's a privilege to have you back on the show. We met a couple of weeks ago at the Velvet Media Call. Yeah. Yeah, so if everyone wants to go check out that little mini interview we did, it's on our website. But it's great to be here and have a more in-depth interview Yeah, with well, you. thanks for coming in. Because I've, you know, researched you and, as you like to call it, Facebook stalking. Face stalking. Um, <laughs> face stalking. But uh, you, you've just had an incredible career, and I cannot wait to talk to you more about it in depth over our over our teas, over our, our five teas. vocal tea. Cheers, Cam. Thanks very yeah, much. Yeah, Cam's actually a mutual friend. We found out. So there you go. And it's the licorice is bloody glorious. And I'm having the lemongrass and ginger. It's delicious. Mm. Just good on a nice cold day and it good is. for your voice and coming off stage. Day, love it. Tea, tea time with Tom. <laughs> You've got to do that tea time with Tom. man. Like. This is the uh, Rave It Up afternoon special, Tea Time with Tom yeah. and Lauren and Tom the cameraman. And Tom the cameraman as <laughs> Tom Squared. <laughs> <laughs> now, most people probably remember you in 2014 as a member of Kylie Minogue's team on The Voice. Maybe at least five people will remember. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people that watch that show. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope so because it's so popular. So how was that experience for you overall? It was pretty good. It was, um, I think the best part about it for me was meeting so many different artists from all over the country that I wouldn't have been introduced to before going on that show. Um, working with Kylie was great as well. I mean, she's such a powerhouse. And, and now to be working with Marsha, I kind of think I've had the best two female role models in the country yeah. um, in the last two years in my life. So I am, um, yeah, I'm really lucky. I can't complain at all. Yeah. Was Kylie who you were hoping to turn the chair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you I, were lucky then. <laughs> no, I, I, I was just hoping to get through. And, and Kylie was the only one that turned around. So... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm The quite, others missed out. They did, yeah. yeah. Sucked in, well, I am. I'm sure you really needed me <laughs> to um, help your career progress, so sucked in. <laughs> he doesn't mean that. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I, um, I loved it, no, and I was hoping for any of the four. They're all amazing coaches. Yeah. And were you nervous performing in front of all those incredible coaches and a full audience? <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever been more scared in my whole career. I uh, well, you held, held yourself really well. Yeah, it's all <laughs> acting. It's all in the face. No, I I was uh, in the waiting room with the cameraman. It was just like this black room with a mirror and a cameraman for about 45 minutes because I was the first person to film that day. So that process terrified me because I just forgot how to walk, forgot how to breathe, <laughs> forgot how to sing, and then somehow it came out. So and it's like, who am I again? <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, I'm glad I did it. If I didn't throw myself out there, I never would. And if I... If I got scared and nervous and didn't do it, I wouldn't be doing some of the things I am now. So mm, no, nobody would probably know about you. Yeah. Until way down the track, I'd I don't know. It was great home. exposure for you. It really was. Yeah. yeah. And I'm I'm really glad I did it. And you still keeping in contact with Kylie? You keeping her up to date? Danny actually came to the show in Melbourne. I came oh, to that's Velvet. That's incredible. Yeah. So we had a little little chat about Kylie. Um, but she's killing it. She's all over the world. She's doing amazing mm. things. So. Can't say I've seen her since 2014, but Kylie, if you're watching, happy to catch up for a cup of five vocal tea. <laughs> and well, even with me, maybe. Yeah, yeah. we're Just there. Bring Lock us all in. in. Yeah. But was music what you always wanted to do as a career ever since you were little, or did no. you have other careers up your sleeve? <laughs> I, I wish I had more options. No, I. I grew up wanting to play cricket or rugby for Australia. That was my dream. That Sport. explains the cricket bat in the dressing oh, room. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I, I, me and my mates in grade 10 at high school up in Brisbane auditioned for the school musical. Me and my footy mates auditioned for the school musical for a bit of a joke to meet some chicks. And then I got the lead role in the show. Um, which was High School Musical, wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't you uh, pick that? Oh my gosh. And yeah, ever since then, the, the sport slowly stopped. I'm still just as passionate about sport as I was when I was doing it, but I just loved it sick. I, I just loved being on stage and telling stories and singing. So ever since then, I've been doing this and now I'm on my seventh gap year from high school. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long gap. That's, yeah, that's a yes, very long gap year. Still working it out. 
Yeah, but you, is there still an inkling in you that still wants to do the cricket professionally? Or oh, I'd love to, but I just haven't been practicing. I, I'm, I think I, I've, I'm too far deep into this career now, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. And you're still really passionate about this. I am, and yeah. uh, the director of this show um, plays cricket. Craig Islet, he plays cricket on the weekends. So when we were rehearsing Velvet, we whipped out the bat and ball and had a game in the rehearsal room. So <laughs> cricket has never left me. Working hard or hardly working. <laughs> Bit of both. <laughs> Velvet seems like it's such a, like, you guys are just a family. We you know? are. Yeah, everyone gets on really well and I love it. Yeah, great job. Yeah. Really, really cool job. I'll have more questions about Velvet, but we'll, we'll, get, okay. we'll get to that soon. Let me just uh, sip my five vocal tea. <laughs> uh, 2016, you co-wrote and recorded your debut EP with Australian Idol winner Wes Carr. Yep. Incredible. How's he going, by the way? I have not heard from him for ages. Is he still doing music? He's still alive, still breathing. He's uh, still look good. <laughs> still around? Okay. Yeah. He is doing incredibly well. He's uh, he's kind of taken a different path. He's he stepped away from the kind of Sony, um, I guess, recording artist world, and he's he's doing his own thing. He's producing his own music, and um, he's got a studio up in, on the Sunshine Coast called uh, Hummingbird Studios, which he produces his own music out of, and also writes for other artists and produces stuff for television and kind of whatever's going at the time. So, and he's got a little boy, um, Willow, who's a legend. He's about four. So he's got a family, him and his wife, Charlotte, um, living up there. And he, yeah, was really instrumental in um, my first EP, which was um, released yeah, probably a year or so ago. And uh, he's killing it. I, I met him when we were on tour with a rock show called Rolling Thunder Vietnam, and we kind of hit it off doing that tour. And then I just said, hey, I'd love to record something of my own. Can you help? And um, of all people to help me, I think he was probably up there. He's the best. Yeah. And uh, yeah, couldn't speak higher of Wes. And, and Marsha knows him as well um, from the Idol days. So. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Well, it was interesting when I watched like the uh, Channel 10 um, story on Velvet when they were here for the media mm -hmm. call. And, you know, Marsha was saying that everybody out of Australian Idol has come out with great mm. careers and he's one of them yeah the thing i like about wes is that he can do so many different things he's an incredible guitar Which we player we just found out i didn't even know that incredible guitar the player producer and... singer keyboard he can play all the instruments and he's just got such a, a warm and and um knowledgeable head on him he, he can really advise younger people like myself on on good things to do at the time in their career that they're up to so yeah oh, she's gonna just keep going up and up i think yeah 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 no Massive so respect to Good guy to have on your side and yeah. good good mentor for Absolutely. you, I guess. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. The last two years, I would honestly say Wes has been a great mentor to me. Oh, awesome. I'll have to get him on the show too and chat about that. Yeah, I'm Wes, sure what are you doing, mate? Yeah, where, where, where are, are you ya? and what are you doing? <laughs> uh, in that same year, you also premiered a one-man cabaret show in Brisbane, which yep. we're chatting about at the media call. But I just wanted to talk to you in more detail about it. Because mm -hmm. at the media call, you were mentioning, you know, that one of the reasons that you started it yep. was because, you know, sometimes the opportunities don't come around in this industry, unfortunately. Yeah. And you just, you create your own opportunity. I love that. <laughs> so for that one man cabaret show, you did also say you're going to bring it back. Are you yes. going to keep it the same or are you going to switch it up a little bit? Just working that out at the moment. I just I had a look back through the archival footage and I hate looking back at myself sometimes. And I was like, we oh, all do. <laughs> it sucks. It's really shit. But can I swear? I don't know. Too late. <laughs> we can blip it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I've just started revisiting that show and I had a, a great team up in Brisbane that I worked on it with. So, yeah. And like you said, when you're making something of your own, uh, when, you, when you're in this industry, it's, it's hard to, to get work um, 12 months of the year and you still got to pay bills and, and, and uh, eat and everything else. So I... Um, yeah, I made this cabaret show, which was loosely based on, um, well, was very much based on the story of my mum's dad, who left Yugoslavia just after World War I. Uh, he was in a really poor village um, just outside of, of town, and he was age 14. And he, uh, him and his family couldn't afford to live, so they um, saved and saved and saved until they had enough for two tickets to a better life, and that's all they could afford. And so they put everyone's name in a hat, uh, everyone in the village put their names in a hat, and my granddad's name was drawn out of the hat at age 14 to Jeez. leave. Um, and uh, he never saw his family again. He got on this boat with another man who was meant to protect him, and then the older man died on the way because it was wow. just months worth of travelling. And uh, he arrived at the dock in New Zealand with no English at age 14, with no idea um, what to do, and he kind of had to sink or swim. 
So long story short, he was taken in by a family and um, he kind of just really made the best of a bad situation. And mum's told me this story about probably 10 times and I never really listened <laughs> <laughs> until I was like, gosh, I need to do something for myself. And mum um, told me the story again and I was like, wow, that's, uh, Incredible idea for that's a, show. a pretty uh, good idea. And I just yeah. recorded that EP with Wes. And I thought it was a really good time to kind of mould the two things together. And, and thankfully, some of my songs worked in the show and I had a great musical director up there, Andrew McNaughton. Um, and he wrote some original songs for the show as well. So long term plan, I think we'd like to develop it into a bit of a musical because it, it really has the potential. But right now yeah. it's, it's one man cabaret sort of territory. Uh, how did you find doing it as a one man show? Like. That must be really challenging, Silly. especially with that sort of story. <laughs> yeah, and there are a lot of ca characters along the way. And that was what we were really struggling with and how do we kind of simplify such a complex tale. But I kind of played a few different characters myself, but a lot of the stories were told through songs and, and it was a real credit to Andrew's um, musicality and he got a really great band together for me. And yeah, it was a, a lot of it was done through music with a bit of scripts thrown in for good measure, but um, we kind of have the full story in the back of our head for for the future wow jeez if it, when it comes back let me know i, I want to come see please it. yeah well we've only done brisbane and as soon as i put it on i got into velvet so i was kind of like yeah yeah we'll do the tour or everything else but um i did the show in november and then we started rehearsals for velvet in december oh, um, tight. <laughs> so then i've been on the road for for the last 10 months with velvet which i can't complain about at all yeah because um doing one man cap raise doesn't pay your bills Every time you do them, yeah. <laughs> especially not the we first wish. time. We wish, yeah, 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 or yeah. you wish. No, you got to invest in that sort of stuff, and you got to really do what you're passionate about. So I'm glad I did it. Yeah. Are you thinking of bringing it to Sydney as well? I would love or? to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've I've spoken to a few people, but again, it's just logistics. I've just joined Marsh's band, so we're going Incredible. on the road. Incredible! Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so now that's another thing which I'm really not complaining about at all. So I've just got to yeah work out when the right time is to it's do cool it. Good. The opportunities are coming. Up coming around for yeah, you. Yeah, well, you always talk about the good ones. <laughs> there's, there's so many, and I'm sure you're in the same boat, yep. that, that you it's miss out on. just in the industry, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You know. So you talk about the good ones all the time, but there's a lot of bad ones that um, you don't talk about when you've got a microphone in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> can chat about them off air, because yeah, yeah, I'm no. sure I will yeah, yeah. relate a Sting lot. Sting them in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you will. But in terms of... And I think it's a big eye-opener for the listeners that aren't in the industry how hard it is to get mm. more jobs and those opportunities. Is that the heart, like the hardest thing that you found with the industry? Or yeah. has there been even harder stuff that we don't even realise? <laughs> I'm going through so many phases of working out the right way and I, there is no right way. That, that's no. kind of the, the most obvious decision. But I, uh, I had an agent um, last year and... Um, I was one of about 300 people on, on this agent's books, so I, I just, I didn't really see the point in being part of an agency um, that couldn't commit the time to, to, just, you, to, yeah. to just me, and that's a selfish thing, but I guess when you're running a business, you've got to be a bit selfish, and, and as an artist, we are running our own business. So I kind of left that situation, and I've just been um, doing my own thing and representing myself for the last year, and I've actually found a lot of joy in that, being in charge of the decisions and and really working hard because if I don't work hard, then I don't get the gigs. Um, and then you can just blame yourself. Yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. So it's kind of all on you your take back. Responsibility. But mm. it's really like in Australia, especially, there's not a lot of gigs to go around. So you can't really limit the stuff that you you do. You can't really say, "Oh, I'm just an actor and I only do film and television," because there's how many gigs that suit your personality mm. in a year. So yeah, I've tried to broaden my skills a bit, but I I think. Yeah, the best thing is just to be kind of a bit confident about what you're doing. But I don't know the right answer yet, <laughs> is what I think I'm trying to say. Just the whole industry is hard. Yeah, just, yeah. You know. it's tough, but it's it's really exciting when something like this comes through. Like, I mean, I, I've dreamt of being in really great musicals and I haven't got into those yet. I just got really close to Mamma Mia and I just missed out. Mm. And then I got really close to Jersey Boys and I just missed out. So that's fine. And you, and I guess, I think two years ago, I wouldn't have um, taken it the way I have now. Like I, I, I kind of mm. now can realize that everyone's good and there's not a lot of opportunity. So if you're not working on your own craft and doing things that you enjoy, that you're in control of, then you're kind of bugging and you're just gonna fall into this like depressed hole. 
So I think it's um, it's just about yeah making your own stuff, but also making sure you're doing what you want to be doing. If mm. you can't be doing the things that you want to be doing because some people say you can't, like the audition panel for whatever show you want to get into. Yeah. Well, everything happens for a reason. So exactly. you might, yeah, you didn't get into Mamma Mia or Jersey Boys. Yeah. you were meant to do Velvet. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And uh, I was just talking to Stevie, the um, muscle man in the show, about everything happens for a reason or that there's always something around the corner. Yep. And then we're, we were joking, like, yeah, there's always something around the corner and it's going to happen and it might not necessarily be good or bad <laughs> either. Like, we're like, yeah. People say that, but then something happens. But yeah, something's always going to happen, right? <laughs> that is true. That was <laughs> so too even deep. If, even if it's a bad thing, it's, it's still going to happen. We're like, oh yeah, we're bugging. No. <laughs> <laughs> the thing around the corner, as you said, might not be a good thing. Exactly, it might be but, a bad thing. but whatever happens, it's so going to happen. You get happen. a lesson out of it. That's yeah. That's why it comes you around. There yeah. You go. See. No. Making everything positive. We just got <laughs> That's really just deep. Me. <laughs> that, I love that. You know, we're, we're raving it up. Raving hey? it up, yeah. literally. Raving it up, <laughs> raving it down, raving it around. Raving it real, you know? Raving it real. I've never With said the that before. vocal team. <laughs> Not product placement at all. <laughs> now, this sounds awesome. Um, Telstra and Samsung used your cover yes. of Peter Allen's song, I Go to Rio, as yeah. their theme song for the Rio Olympics. That's insane. On all the TV channels, in the stadiums, online and in stores. Like, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, How did wow. that make you feel when you found that out? Cool. I, um, I've never felt the feelings I have felt that day. I bet. <laughs> I got a call um, and um, the director of the ad was looking for a new version of Peter Allen's song and apparently they'd auditioned all these different songwriters, these legit songwriters. And uh, then he just YouTube re- legit songwriter. Uh, what are you talking uh, about? <laughs> I'm getting more legit every day, but I don't think so yet. And he said he, he YouTubed or Googled... Um, Peter Allen, I Go to Rio, like a version, and my video clip that was made by my good mates, Optical Block in Brisbane, uh, it came up uh, as the first search on Google, and he listened to it and then um, gave me a buzz. So that day was pretty insane. Wow, jeez. Yeah, and then just going home and watching the Olympics and every time there was an ad, my was your my voice was on the track. <laughs> I was like, well, just, you know, those, those like bucket list things that you just... Never think that I really... I'd never really thought about doing something like that. But then when it, it happened, I was about, like, yeah. this is pretty cool. It was a pinch yourself moment. It was. I think. It, it was. <laughs> now, in terms of theatre, you have played Romeo in Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> Jack in Into the Woods, and yep. George in Spring Awakening. That's right. But what has been your most favourite character to play? Oof. I'm sure that's a very hard question to answer. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they've all been so different, but I guess everyone says that. I reckon Romeo. Like, I, another, uh, same again, I, I never thought I'd be performing Shakespeare because I, through high school, I was kind of a sporty guy and every time they talked about Shakespeare in English or drama, I was, like, Ugh. Ugh, I hate this. But <laughs> I really, for the first time, understood the language and and playing someone, yeah, as, as famous as that in the language of Shakespeare, uh, it was just, yeah, really cool. So Isn't it funny Romeo. outside of school and you're, you know, having to do Shakespeare? Yeah. In school you hate it because you're forced to do it. Yeah, yeah. And then when you're actually doing something you love and have to learn it then, you yeah. get a different outcome. Yeah, you're exactly right. I didn't even think I'd get the gig because I didn't like Shakespeare. And then I got the gig and I was bullied into, not bullied into, but forced <laughs> forced to learn the, the language. It was either yeah. sink or swim. And as soon as I got through that barrier of this is too hard and actually learnt the lines, it was... Amazing. Such a buzz. There you go, Romeo. The most iconic (laughs) character ever, pretty much. Pretty legit. I'd I'd say he's up there. (laughs) Yep, he's done a few things, the old Romeo. (laughs) Yes, there's been a lot of Romeos, actually, yeah. IGA now calls some of their stores Romeo. Have you seen that? What? No. I saw that over in Martin Place. It's like Romeo's IGA. What the? What does this even mean? So, um, yes. <laughs> Romeo owns some IGAs. What the hell? He's getting around. He's getting around car. from the dead. <laughs> now, with Spring Awakening, I actually haven't seen it, mm-hmm. but I've heard a lot about it that it's quite sexual. How does? How do you get away with that on stage? It's, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit sexual. Just a little. That was so long ago. It was one of my first gigs out of high school. So we're going back. We're going back. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> it was, I played, 
I played the character of Georg, so it's it's like a, a, a German sort of, it's based on an old German play from memory. And it's kind of mixed in with all these awesome rock songs and it, was, it tells the story of two teenagers who shouldn't be together at this time in history and and uh, their community says that they shouldn't get together and um, then, yeah, this, this girl has a, has a kid and um, they kind of have to deal with the consequences and um, a lot of stuff goes down. So, stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I was lucky because I didn't have to take my clothes off or do the... Uh, oh, there was one scene where we had to... Uh, uh, do something inappropriate with our genitalia and our hands. Um, so yeah, it was really interesting having my parents and grandparents come along. Oh my god, that that's so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the same. Is there I totally anybody forgot in the audience, about it. But know? yeah, that's when you're playing a character, you just got to commit or you're buggered. How did they even get away with like bringing Spring, Spring Awakening well, onto the stage in the first place? Uh, like, it's, yeah, it's pretty writing much, something like that. You're like, yeah, what? But <laughs> such a cool cool story and and still relevant today and, and wins heaps of awards <laughs> yeah and i saw atyp's production uh, maybe last year the year before it was, it was amazing so every time i see it it's it's always kind of refreshed and done a, a, a slightly different way so who knows you might get it. back into it i'd in love the to do that show yeah love to do it again anyone watching let's do it let's do it yeah and i'm sure there's a lot of other shows you'd love to be in as well oh 100 percent. mama mia jersey boys yeah too late too late <laughs> you bastards <laughs> <laughs> it's your loss yeah. Vel- velvet got you no i can't wait a massive fan i can't wait to see him yeah well you are in velvet at the moment now you've worked in music theater film tv and cabaret but what attracted you to velvet for well, those people that haven't seen it, I can see what attracted you to it, but... <laughs> <laughs> Velvet attracted me to Velvet. I saw it last year. Um, I was doing a show in the Comedy Festival in Melbourne um, with, a bunch of, with a bunch of great people, and a couple of my mates in the cast came backstage, and they'd gone to the opening night, and then they came in to the dressing rooms and said, I've just seen the best show ever, you've got to go see it, and... Me and my girlfriend were like, uh, yeah, we've heard that before. Uh, but we went and, yeah, was just blown away with what we saw. I'd never seen anything like it. I'd never really Either seen... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen kind of circus shows, but this is kind of just next level. And with the disco music, I just... I was really in it when I saw it. So then I went back and saw it again, and I was just... Yep, stalking them on on the, on the onlines and oh, really, <laughs> my dad's really influenced my speech pattern. With with he calls um, Twitter and Facebook and YouTube you twit face. So you twit face. And I, <laughs> I love that. And I hear people say on the socials and on the Facebook. So every time I talk about something on the internet, I'm like on the onlines and on the yeah. should stop. You seen the internship movie? It's just on the line. No. Not online, but on the oh, line. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I still haven't seen that. I wanted to when I saw the. Trailers. Just watch that scene. It's hilarious. <laughs> you don't need to see the, one, the rest the movie but yeah <laughs> that's what my dad says on the line but now i'm kind of Put trying to make it line. cool like I, when my dad says it, i'm like i oh, shout out dad but now i'm, I'm trying i'm, I'm now trying i say it, it and cool, i'm trying yeah. to make it cool <laughs> full circle the, uh, the younger generation yeah yeah so i stalked the show and i was so bummed that i didn't know about it and then i did uh, just stop thinking about it like you do when you can't get something you're like oh whatever i give up yeah, yeah i give up and then <laughs> i did a show and then the producers of this show came to see that show rolling thunder which i did with wes and uh then they were going to do another tour and the, do- the guy doing this role uh couldn't do it anymore so they emailed me and i came in for an audition and then four auditions later i was learning the ukulele and I was, uh, Marsha came in and I felt like I was an Australian Idol for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, I got the gig. Do I have to audition again? <laughs> I know. For just Marsha? I know. <laughs> yeah, wow. it was, uh, it's crazy and I love it. What a dream come true for you then. It's, yeah, it's funny. It's funny how it all happened. And I, I've, until I saw it, I didn't know anything about it. And here we are a year later, I'm in the middle of it. And 10 months, you said, as 10 well. 10 months, like, full time work. It's pretty rare. Yeah. And how has it been working with Marsha? She's Horrible. just a legend. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Yeah, I'm sure there's some no, I little things it. you could probably share with us. I honestly <laughs> have no negative comments about Marsha at all. I wish I had something because I'm like, surely. Wish we had the juicy stuff. <laughs> surely this chick is not as good as people say she is, but <laughs> she is that and more. I, I am having the best time on the road with her. She's kind of this mother figure on stage and off stage. She's she's Aww. basically my manager. Every time we're in a room, because we've been to a lot of places now, and every time we're in a room with important people at a function or, or whatever, 
they'll all come up to her because they want to chat to Marsh and then she'll make sure that those important people talk to me. That's and, great. Um, yeah, she's, um, she's been, yeah, very humble, mm. very motherly, can sing like a crazy lady. Oh. And I'm um, just trying yeah, to keep up. me too. Yeah. 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 Especially yeah. normal. You would have heard on, on opening night. Yeah. Her voice is just next level, hey. It was just like, it gave me goosebumps. That's I how know. good she is. It's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, yes. I don't. Well, I guess, and, and a lot of people who have been around for a long time, their voices get a bit tired over, over their long career. But Marsha's, I swear, is getting stronger every day. Yeah, because I, I remember, like, even before watching her, everyone's always just like, she's an incredible singer, and you know, mm-hmm. you've seen her on TV and you've listened yeah. to her albums, but it's like, is she actually that good life? She is. She is like ten times better, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. And then she's still keen to have a laugh and pay me out backstage, and it's just, yeah, it's heaps of fun. I'm See, a family vibe. Family vibe. Yes. And as you did mention, I was there on opening night. What and do you it was think? great to. F- oh, I loved it. I was, I, even I came out of it and I was just like, what the hell was that? That was like awesome. Totally. It just I didn't so really much... know how it was going to be. Mm. I knew that it was going to be, you know, circus performers and stuff and then disco music. But yeah. I'm like, how did they go together? <laughs> I know. And did you did you pick up the story or were, were yes, you? Yes, I did. Yeah, you were. I did have a question though. There is some weird, it kind of takes a weird turn there for a bit. <laughs> yep. It's kind of like a, a BDSM theme in a way. It is, actually now whatever you want to so, call what, it. So yeah, what, why? What, what do you think? I, I was just like, d- <laughs> damn, like that. <laughs> if that's what you're into, then yeah. great. But at the same time, I'm like, this was G-rated like five minutes ago. I know, it could have been a family show until that happened. <laughs> until that happened. I was just like, how does this fit into the story? Well, it's... Well, there's so many ways and it's... I love that there's no dialogue in the show, so it doesn't actually tell you. you yeah, so you've got to figure it out you get, yourself. Yeah, and you don't even have to figure it out. Whatever you kind of take from it is the right answer. Basically, that was a good answer. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> basically, um, yeah, he goes through this really incredible experience that, and and it changes for me every night too. Sometimes I'm really into it and I'm, I'm kind of taken by it. Sometimes, some nights I'm terrified by it. I've always got a bit of a bit, bit of a different story in my head. So there really is no right or wrong answer. I like that. Yeah, so and that's what you I, mix it up. That's what I loved when I saw the show too. We all, all my four, four friends that I was there with, we all had a different kind of version of the story, and I was like, that is the coolest thing. And then it, the way it finishes, it's kind of, was that kind of a dream or did that actually happen? Yeah, because that um, went through my mind too. I was like, yeah. was he dreaming or did he just have this huge realisation and is finally his true Exactly. Self? And that's a, lo- that's a reflection on life. Do we, do we get into that sort of stuff or are we just imagining that's what we want to do sort of thing? I, I don't know. I think Craig, I like the way he's pulled this whole show together is... Incredible. Um, yeah. Yeah, simple but really intelligent at the same time. That was a very deep answer. We went and there. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we went there. <laughs> so is that one of your favourite scenes of Velvet or do you have another favourite uh, scene? I think, well, when I started it was the You Medley singing, um, singing uh, You To Me, uh, Everything, Sweetest Song. Um, so I like that whole sequence, but Staying Alive, getting to kind of strip back the Bee Gees so- like, song. Yeah. Is that the Bee Gees song? It is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Opening night to the, the ukulele cutout. <laughs> It Halfway did. through. Oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> well, um, no, it was. Uh, no, it didn't. didn't. It was all good. <laughs> yeah, I'm just. I was just having a flashback. Yeah, so I love that the intimacy of, of that, and sometimes, yeah. So we did the second half a cappella that night, which we don't usually do, but it still I'm worked. Kind of, yeah, I'm thinking back to it now. Yeah, yeah. I just put it down. But yeah, I, I you love. You did too. I just thought that was part of it. <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all meant to be. If you made oh. a different facial expression, then we would have all known. Yeah. It, oh, would have gone that. that's not Ooh. supposed to happen. <laughs> no, I just love the words. I just, I, I, I've always heard that song and I've never really listened to the words. So Me too. Slowing it down and, and to hear what he's actually talking about is whoosh, pretty like, well. It's a lot of a, more of a deeper song than I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. But so. again, you can take what you want from it. I read a review the other day when someone was saying that um, this is about the... Um, Staying alive is uh, a representation of the high, um, the high prices on housing and and living in Sydney and how we're all just trying to stay alive. And I was like, whoa, oh, that was deep. I've never <laughs> thought about that, but that's really cool that they thought that. No, 
Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to have I... a listen back to that song now. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then I'm going to have a different representation as well. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, there's too many. But yeah, you can <laughs> you can overthink the show too. On, on one level, it's there's a, a cool story you can think about. On another level, you can just have a good night with your mates and listen to some music. It's definitely a fun and night. see some crazy acts. The songs get stuck in your head and you want to get up and dance. Yeah. Yeah. So that if happens. you're a dancer, you're gonna love it. If Get you're on not, in there. then who cares? Embarrass yourself. <laughs> then stuff you. <laughs> yeah, embarrass yourself anyway. I like it. <laughs> so as we found out, you are an actor and a singer. Mm. But what do you prefer between the two? <laughs> yeah, Good question. I went there. Good question. He just likes velvet because he gets to do both. I know. <laughs> I I go through phases. Sometimes when I've done a lot of acting, I'm like, oh, I miss singing. I'd love to sing, and then. Then I sing for a bit and I'm like, oh, I miss acting. So right now I'm, I'm kind of three quarters of the way through the tour. So I'd love to do a play or something um, next year. But yeah, I, I can't choose. I'm always, I, I can never decide, which I think is the right option. It's the right option, yeah. Just let yeah. the opportunities come to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Don't want to limit it. No. But I should, like, I'm, I'm always learning new skills too. I didn't play any instrument before this gig and I had to learn the ukulele. And uh, after Rolling Thunder last year, I bought a bass guitar, and I'm slowly learning that. And I, hmm. this year, I bought an acoustic guitar. So, yeah, I'm I'm always keen to learn. How do you have time <laughs> to learn these? Good <laughs> question. Well, me and my mate have just started a, a business up in Brizzy too. So in the daytime, I'm I'm running a little agency called Two and Co Casting. Plug. Um, <laughs> we'll and, go check um, it out. Yeah, so daytimes I'm, I'm kind of working on the business sort of stuff and then nighttimes I'm doing shows and in the middle maybe learning something. I don't know. You just got to do it. You only live once. I know, but how do you Says have time? you. You're always running around doing these great interviews. I know. I walk in and he goes, you've been busy. You've been busy. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. We, we, you got to do it. We're good at time management. That's what it is. Yeah, That's the answer, guys. Yeah, we at least pretend that we are. Yeah. <laughs> we're, Lots we're of little s- naps. I love a good nap. Do you nap between your things? I wish. Really? I wish. When I get to, when I get over <laughs> something after a couple of hours, I just have a little 15. Bang, straight into it. Yeah, I'm going to have to really start doing that. I recommend it then. highly. I used to hate naps, and then I've, as I've gotten older and more busier, really? I, I'll, I'll love a nap. you got to do it. At the same time, it's like, when do I have time? <laughs> yeah. When do you, I used to come home from high school and nap for an hour before I'd do anything to. I was just kind of, yeah. maybe I'm sick. Maybe I'm too tired. <laughs> You're getting old quickly. Yeah, getting old. <laughs> Nah, love a good nap and okay. a good tea. We learned something. Tea time with Tom and Tom and Lauren. If the boring <laughs> doesn't work. I'm sorry. Nah. I'll just change leave. it. Change your name. <laughs> no, just tea time with tea time with Tom. Just just do that. Yeah. Just tea time with Tom. You just with you. No, nah, I can only do I'm it with sh- cameraman Tom too. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the fans would love that. <laughs> you know, just some <clears throat> casual chatting to the camera. I don't know how it would work, but me either, but. Keep it in the back of your mind for future projects. We've got to give it a bell. Yep. Mm. And speaking of future projects, what's coming up? What is got coming up? Got the One Man Cabaret yeah. show and... Yep. I'm, um, I've been writing, writing some tunes on the road. I want to do another EP. Yes. I would really, really like to get into film and television properly. I started, had a few little guesties and, and bits and pieces, like, like started last year. So I'd love to try and <clears throat> get back into that world. Business happening... Um, cabaret on the road. There's a few options next year for some maybe tours. I'm just kind of locking that in. And yeah, on the road with Marsha. So, all right. Well, a few maybes and a few few locked in. Keep us updated. I will. You're always welcome back on to Rave It Up. Thank you. No, you're welcome. I'm but we're always to on the socials that. too. On the that's true. On the Facebooks and the you twit faces. You twit faces. <laughs> I love that. I'm sure my dad's probably going to start saying that now. Yeah. Now, Tom, what are so <clears throat> What advice would you give to the listeners who might want to follow their dreams of becoming mm-hmm. a singer yep. or an actor or whatever else you do? <laughs> I <laughs> swear you do a bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. I would recommend to set goals, write them down, work out exactly where you want to be in five years or in a certain amount of time frame, mm-hmm. and um, then slowly tick it off. You're going to smash into some speed bumps along the way. We all do, but uh, just work out what you want to do and then work out how you can do it. Um, is that too simple? No, I love that. It seems simple. and yet Actually, it's... I think out of everybody I've interviewed, they've never said write down your goals. So there yeah. you go. Well, uh, yeah, uh, and I didn't do it for ages. I just said, yeah, I want to I I do, do stuff. I want to be a singer. But then, yeah, I just kind of 
and every day they're changing. It doesn't matter if they change, but just having an idea of a sort of place that you want to be and then um, working out how to do it, meeting great people along the way, networking. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, yeah, just, yeah, networks are great too, I think. Um, every well, kind yeah. of, I've, I've slowly figured out that every job sort of leads to the next one in a weird way. It might not be with the same team, but you'll meet someone who knows someone who knows someone and then you'll audition for a gig and they'll go, oh, yeah, you worked with my mate Freddie on, um, what's her name? So, um great we have that sort of trust there so that kind of leads to um, whenever you've got a job like I've got a great job right now I'd recommend um, doing it to the best of your ability and making sure you don't burden burn any bridges along the way too I've mm. seen that happen to a few people it's definitely about who you know in the industry yeah and I've definitely figured that out mm. after not after seven years but uh, through the seven years I've been doing this you're on your seventh gap year too this is yeah yeah, yeah. Nice. I like that. Did, you, the gap year. did you study? Yes, I did. So, it's not really a gap here. McClay College. McClay College, where's that? In Surrey Hills. Oh, la la. Yeah. I was born in Surrey Hills. Were you? Yeah, yeah. Another little quick fact. A little local history there. <laughs> yeah, you really, you just got to choose your own path and enjoy it. And there's no specific path, I've realised as well. Everyone yeah. gets into the industry a different way. Yeah, and. Even if you get to a good place, I wouldn't recommend telling everyone that you're the best thing ever. I think uh, uh, being a bit humble and sort of appreciating the place that you are is a good idea too because I've seen a bit of that. Unfortunately. It's, it's a bit awkward and I just don't like it. It's like you used to be different. Yeah. <laughs> You've changed. You've changed, Cheryl. yes. I don't know who Cheryl is. <laughs> I was about to say, who is this? Give us the scoop. <laughs> I don't think I know a Cheryl. No, maybe I do. Hello, Cheryl. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there is a Cheryl listening though, but it's not you. Yeah. Now, we are getting to the end of the interview, unfortunately. That's okay. It's been a lot of fun. But as a closing statement, and was probably the most important question, mm -hmm. knowing what you know now, what yep. would you tell your 14-year-old self? Whoa. That's I love one. that reaction. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Save your money, 14-year-old Tom. That would have been a better idea. <laughs> probably would say that too, actually. Yeah. I, that it, age, we used to just, I, you know. <laughs> it was fun. Use it wherever. And it was good, but, like, I went to schoolies, and I, I don't think that was the best decision at the time. It was the cool thing to do. Spent all that money. What did I gain from it? Not that much. Worked heaps of jobs when I was in high school. I reckon I could have set myself up a little bit better and had, like, I moved to Melbourne um, just out of high school and had to work hard to to pay rent and all that stuff. If I'd just saved from 15 onwards, I reckon uh, I would have been doing a bit better financially down there. So is that an all right answer? That is a great answer. 14-year-old <laughs> Tom, save your money. <laughs> and good advice for all the 14-year-olds. Yeah. Also. Save your money because down the track. It's, and if you've got yeah, goals need it. and you know what you want to do, the money will help you do that. So save it if you've got it. Yeah. And before we go, if the listeners would like to contact you or mm. find out what you're up to, where mm -hmm. should they go? I've got a website, tomoliver.com.au. I should How be updating that. that. <laughs> got my own website. Should be updating that. It's a bit behind, but I will do that this week. And yeah, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. I'm not very good at Twitter, but um, I try. I feel like nobody really likes Twitter anymore. No, I just kind of share bit... the stuff from Instagram because that's the thing that you can do. But... Yeah, you just share it and all your... There you go. You just go on one and you yeah, do yeah. them all at the same time. Smash it save out. Save time. Yeah. All right. Well, easy enough to find you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that is also how I found you and thank you for stalked doing that. you before the interview. I appreciate that. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show today, Tom. Thanks I really for having me. Appreciate your time. We'd love to have you on again in the future. Yeah, so we should check in in about yeah. a year and see if I'm doing see what I said I'd do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Replay the interview for yeah, you and yeah. go, you so did you do this? So what have you got to say about 24-year-old Tom, 25-year-old Tom? Um, you lied. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. In a year. Let's, let, yeah, let's do, do that. Do in a year. What's yeah. the date? We'll do well, it. I'll bring another uh, vocal tea for you. Great. I need yeah. another one by then. You, <laughs> you probably need a lot by then, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but we'll keep in contact and we'll make it happen. Sounds good. Uh, for everyone watching, make sure to check out Tom. Go follow him on social media and check out Velvet. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. See you Bye. later. Bye.